Don't you know that the music should be soft? It's happening. I did not want to interrupt that. (laughs) Anytime the Juicy Pants wants to sing, coming from me, who's an incredible singer, you just shut the fuck up and you let your boy sing. Let it go. Hit the Hi, buddy. Hey. Have you had any sleep last night? One hour, 23 minutes. (laughs) And you know how I know? I'm going to tell you how I know. Because um, son of a gun. The movers left. We just moved into the new place, right? The movers left it. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, Congrats, awesome. buddy. So the, the, the movers left at 5 oh something a.m. Like, I how can't dare really, they? How dare they? They were there um, pretty much all day and night. And a uh, bunch of good kids, young good. kids, bunch of them. Great. Uh, love sons. Love, Good. All this, love all the stuff um so they left and then uh and then i you know we're in the we're in this you know because we're on this ranch so you know it's not done nothing's done so everything's like in construction basically hence yep. why i'm in this corner so i i went to take a, a much deserved shower at five something a.m gonna get ready for the Woo! for the bed yeah cold cold water came on after about two and a half minutes um so that really <laughs> not a lot of hot water yet my ass was puckering, <laughs> puckering. So I wasn't. Uh, they, they got. They're gonna it be gets here. a little puckered in season seven with with, with SOA as well. Puckered so, on, puckered, go. puckered in season seven, <laughs> puckered in season four. Um, so then I I went to sleep. Yeah, and then uh, as I was lulling myself into sleep, and I think lullaby I'm going to sleep. for Theo, lullaby for Theo. It's a great song. I would like that to be sung because me, I just almost fell asleep with you singing. That, right? yeah. <laughs> You're killing it. You need more. You need less sleep all the time. You're so killing this. Juno and the kids <laughs> came in. At, I can just see your head just hitting the table right now. Ow. Se- I would. I would. Well, I, this isn't a table. Let me tell you what's I happening. I can't see here. what is on there. Shoe boxes. Okay. Shoe boxes, <laughs> moving boxes, computers on moving boxes, I love shoe it. boxes. Um, no pillows, though. I have the pillows. I'm not on pillows. No, and I'm okay. looking out a window. And I told you when I look out the window, I've now keep seeing deer and baby deer chasing. me. I know, love it. Which is amazing. And Juno's over here trying to get some rest because <laughs> she hasn't slept since we got here. She's finally sleeping. She's like her master. Yeah. Oh, she's freaking out. And and I, I know the contractors are coming any second to check on that hot water issue. So she's probably going to go buck wild. So if you hear barking, we go. We're live. We're live, peeps. Here we are. That's how we do it. Um. Yeah. So all good. You you I could see your hair is a different shade. Yeah, we uh, we had some major consultation with the incredible people at HBO. And they said, um, you want to dye it there in L.A. before you come? I said, I'd love to. I've got my guy here. Herb, yeah. he's my guy. Yeah. And so we went in there and with uh, many uh, brushes of the stroke of the strokes with the brush, we came up with like a couple of shades under black. Black mm. is not where you really want no, to go. No, you don't want to go black. My Even though Frank's black hair. Frank Sturgis did have pretty black hair, maybe a shade. Yeah. Anyway, the point is we're ready to go. Burns are going to be ready to be finessed when I get there. We'll put a little gray in them. I'm going to look just like this guy. So I'm pretty excited to get there. You already, you already look pretty much like him. Not I mean, bad, right? Got, saw, yeah. You just got to get some tint on the skin. A little, a little bit. Oh, for sure. And this guy, Frank, he hung out with all his best buddy, Cuban buddies down in Miami all the time. He's got a, he's got a tan. Did he smoke cigars? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Four, seven. Nice. Yeah, I don't think that's going to really, you know, it's going to be interesting to keep talking with all our beautiful family, family on here when I'm doing that show, because Theo, it's going to be interesting for me to see what the rules are now with cigarettes. Yeah. Like, are we all herbal? Uh, which is fine with me. Are we all? Yeah. Oh, no, they you suck on the lungs. Huh? They, suck on, they, they suck on the lungs, the herbal cigarettes. Oh, they're they're horrible, but yeah. they're much better for you than the real thing. So 100%. It's good. Uh, you know, I'll have I'll have little answers for all our peeps once I start filming to see how that's going to play out. It's so wild when you think about it, like because, you know, I, I quit smoking. Oh, my God. So long ago now. 11 years ago or something. Right. 
And I loved it. I loved this. I mean, I'm not, I would never, I'll never You're good at it. Oh my God. I, I just, I enjoyed it. I mean, I'll be completely honest. There's no other way to be. I, I enjoyed it, but it's, you know, obviously it's a death sentence and correct. <clears throat> so I didn't, but I, I think it's so wild. And now watching these shows, I find a lot of other things that are wild, but it's so wild that we used to smoke, yeah. not just while we were filming, but we'd yeah. be smoking on the set. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they finally came up with a rule. You, you remember with maybe three seasons to go, two, three seasons to go, they said there's no more smoking inside. You can smoke in the scenes, but there's no more. Oh, hang on, Tommy. Right, we'd just no, sit out, down like out. if the scene was happening here, we'd sit on the couch here like while they were lighting and we'd be smoking. We'd have a smoke. Yeah, those days are over. We couldn't do I'll, that with the last three I'll seasons. never forget a couple of years back, so it had to be, Maybe it was like 2016. I was uh -huh. in one of your one of your favorite spots in Sofia, Bulgaria, filming the movie. And the makeup artists were like smoking while they were doing my makeup. Like the no, they were. Dang, were they? The cigarette God was dangling out of their mouth. Up. And I was like, Bulgaria. They <laughs> <laughs> were just smoking while they were doing my makeup. And I was like, is this is this what goes on here? <laughs> um, but yeah. But no, it's it's uh, I can't imagine that I have not. If I've smoked in a movie or a scene since, it's been the herbal and I kind of try not to do it. I'm like, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe they wouldn't smoke. Yeah. You know, because it just, it's terrible. Yeah, no, my, my obviously I've read all, all five episodes of this limited series yeah. and there's not a lot of smoking that goes on, but they certainly point it out when it does. Yeah. So I'll have answers for everybody. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, um, your hair, I have to go in for a dye session tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. How long did it take you? Because I'm curious, my schedule is my appointments at 10. Well, I don't know how much you want to give away to everybody. I mean, mostly we, people are listening to this beautiful podcast, but the, yeah. few that, the, the thousands, hundreds of thousands are yeah. looking at YouTube as well. They'll see Theo. You're, you're about to go radical with your Pretty hair. radical. Like yeah. mine's, a, I have dark hair anyway. Yeah. So to get it darker, it wasn't a huge stretch, but what you're going to do, I'm going the opposite. You're going the exact opposite. Yeah. So I don't know, bro. I mean, I don't know either. Your hairdresser will know for sure. Maybe a couple <clears> of yeah, times. It's my first time with uh, he's we'll see what he does out here in Austin. Um, yeah. You know, this is a, this is a choice that we'll see if it plays. No. Out. And not only, not only is it a choice, it's going to be so perfect for both the guys you're about to play yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Really cool. Look for you. I think it's dead on. You showed me photos last week. Yeah, I think, you know, what you I mean, maybe I, look like, yeah, I've been trying to, you know, I mean, I think that when we attack these characters, right, you know, as I'm, as I'm starting to see, I, I don't know, maybe if it's because it's being done less and less by actors that I'm trying to do it more and more. It seems that less and less actors are trying to fit into what the character would be technically, mm. and they're just kind of stepping on set. And I'm not knocking anybody in particular. I'm just saying overall in a consensus, it seems that a lot of people are like getting jobs and they're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to be me and read lines. And like, they're not kind of altering. To, and, and I think to answer that, I think maybe that's why they get hired in the first place. They hire guys like you and me, guys like you and me. Yeah. And the William Fickners of the world and the Tommy Flanagan's too. Yeah. Oh, they're going to encompass they're going to change it up. We don't even know what they're going to look like. We're going to discuss, but because they're not afraid to go there. Yeah, I, I think I think that's what you and I do. And I yeah, and the other guys and the other guys and the other guys and, and girls, you know, both. Um, I think it's amazing. Like, I, I can't imagine. And I and I say this only in a way of like almost like uh, admiration of like or envy, maybe maybe it's envy of like. Oh, you're just going to go and like say the lines exactly the way like you are like, you know, you keep continuing your workout, you don't gain or lose weight, you don't change anything, you're not doing a dialect, you're just like, hey, yeah. I'm gonna show up. Yeah. And what I try to explain to some people is there are a lot of brilliant actors, like me and Mona play this game where he goes, do you think so and so is a good actor? And I say, they're really good at what they do. Like, I'll say certain people, right? Yeah. And he goes, and to us, that means that certain people can read the phone book with their cadence of their voice and their look yeah. and they're fantastic. Right. Yeah. And they don't have to do anything. They don't really have to do more because them themselves. And those are usually the people that are doing the voiceovers for the commercials and the, they're Absolutely. just very Absolutely. distinguished in what they do. They don't need to transform because they have been 
transformed since their inception. Absolutely. And then there's obviously the goats that, you know, the greatest of all time, the people like Gary Oldman, who people don't really even know what he looks like normally. <laughs> like, you know, what does he look like when he's he, not? He, he doesn't, character? he doesn't either. <laughs> it's I know Gary. <laughs> yeah. What's what I look like today? I have no fucking idea, Kim. <laughs> How do I look? Tell me. I have fucking no idea. He's it's hysterical. Like, he's it's like amazing. you see Bale, you see Christian Bale in these photos when he's out and he's got like the long beard and the long hair and, <laughs> and he just, and then he becomes someone else. Fascinating, right? I love, I, and I love, I think that I love that thing. And, it, and it's funny because with the film that's out right now, the Army of the Dead film, everybody's can we like, just Can we just for one second, give it up to Bert and your cast? Crazy. You know me, bro. Yeah. I'm not a zombie watching guy. No, I've seen it twice now. I'm so wow. enthralled with the cutting of that film yeah. and the energy of that film, yeah. the look of that film. Yeah. And I was scared freaking shitless in a good way. Like yeah. not a slasher Halloween kind of horror. That This was different. I'm, Thought what an epic mother. No one. I think Megan. I think Megan is the biggest super fan, and she started like a Reddit chat. She keeps asking me like questions, and I'm like, I don't know. You know. Um, Can you give me one example of a question? Oh, are they really? Are they robots? Are the zombies robots? And oh, are oh, they, gotcha, you know, because gotcha. all these little things that are happening. Gotcha. And um, and I'm just like, I don't know. But what I will say is, it's pretty amazing. After just a few weeks. It's been watched by 76 million people and it's on its way to being the most watched thing ever on Netflix. And it's crazy when you think it's about crazy, it. Theo. 190 countries. It's crazy. No, it's so, crazy. So what I was going to say before we got into that was that everybody's like, why do you play such a bad guy? And I want to say, because that's the way it was written and he's a bad guy can i can i just say like seriously <laughs> on a level on a level of like bad guys like if I, am i not coming up anymore juicy pants what's going on yeah you are no uh it's because we have a guest oh no there's a guest here there's a guest here look at this hold on we have a guest look at this you didn't even know about it we're recording yeah, we're recording. So whoever this guest is coming in, we're recording right now. I'm, I might shed a tear. I might shed a tear. I might shed a tear too. This is how tired I am. Let's uh, while this I just, guest. I is heard connected. a no. I heard a breath. Suck my balls. Yeah, no. I hear oh, it. there it is. <laughs> click I your camera. Click, click, click your camera. Click your camera. Click your camera because the camera. I'm not fucking me. trying to. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you techno savvy motherfuckers. It's coming. Oh, man, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I can feel it. I can feel it. That, but, but, oh, and am I? Oh, 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 there oh, you oh. are. <laughs> Go and see. Where's my boy? Where's Rossi? Right here. Yeah. Right next to you. Yeah, you yeah. handsome bastards. You're on hey, your Dina you, Flan. You, Look at your hair. You, you look amazing. Netflix, you motherfucker. Well yeah. done, my boy. Only thing I know, wrong right, with that, Tommy? Only thing wrong with that fucking movie. There wasn't enough Rossi. Ah, well, well you know, that's right. I, I mean, it's I got to get out of there before they have to go do those long action scenes. I got to get out. <laughs> I don't want to stick around for that shit. <laughs> Flanagan, <laughs> Flanagan, your lighting right oh, now, see. your lighting right now has never been better. Whatever Shanghai, massive baby. fucking room they have you in in Chicago, stay there. Hi, town, that? baby. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> how is it? How is it there? How you doing in Chicago? How you doing, bro? So it's so horrible. They treat me so badly. It's terrible. Uh, I have to live in, I have to live so in squalor. I have to live in squalor and just do it. It's just fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was back in Eastern House in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, boys. It's great seeing you. So, Tommy, I, I moved in. I, I'm, we're going to have to sidebar. I moved into I the hear. ranch last night. I, I was telling Tommy all about it. I'm here. Hello, rancher. I'm in. All I'm right. exhausted are already. For, are you ready for your donkey? I'm ready for my donkey. <laughs> I mean, am I, 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 have to, I am getting a donkey, and it's got to well, be. The, the fucking, I promised you, has been wrapped. For the, it's, been, it's been sweating his arse off, wrapped up <laughs> in fucking brown paper and, and, bo and bows. What's Wait that donkey's name? What's Wait that donkey's name? Uh, to Texas. Uh, Pepita. 
Actually, you know, again, yeah, I love her too much. <laughs> Pepita. Does, let great. me ask you a question about Pepita and you. Do, do yes, you sir. have like the same relationship with the donkeys and the other farm animals that you have with like dogs and cats and stuff like that? Like, do they have that kind of personality or no? Um, well, the donkeys are, the donkeys are like the fucking, I, I have huge dogs, as you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and guess what? More coming. I, the ones you need, long story i'll tell you guys <laughs> off camera <laughs> but apparently apparently there's more dogs coming but um the donkey uh it's the best guard animal yes. you can That's imagine they say they, yeah. they fucking go crazy for coyotes rattles, oh snakes. yeah they do uh, and they will fucking throw it down like, oh, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> i also do donkey i do voiceovers in case you want to do shrek too <laughs> four or five, that would be you Shrek like. Four. Let me tell five, you something. Six, <laughs> I'm actually surprised. Not, not to you sidebar, Tommy. Tommy, but I'm actually surprised you don't do more like cartoon voices. Like, have they? They never came to you with that stuff. They've offered you that shit, right, Tommy? Um, I I, I read once for uh for for um what's his name uh, uh fucking Seth um. Rogan? Yeah, no, no, the well, one from Family McFarlane. Guy. Family Guy. Yeah, and McFarlane. And, uh, McFarlane. Oh, and right, right. I, I didn't get a gig, but I know I, I, I think the reason I didn't get a gig was because <laughs> that time we had that big FX thing in San Diego or whatever, and it was sure, all the, the FX Comic -Con. shows were there. And then we, we all marched in like tall gangsters, yeah. which, which, which we obviously which we were. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're not. And, yeah. uh, I saw him. I was like, Fuck, seven Fallon. I was dying to go say hi, but we, we, we all we had this swagger on. Like, nah, yeah. just, just keep, just hey, 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 And um, anyway, I, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I would love well, to you know, it's shit. funny. It's it's true when you bring that up. Go it was super fucking intimidating when we would go to those Comic Cons because we wouldn't leave each other. Everybody else would be like separate, and we don't walk in together, all together, all the time. Yeah, but, Plus, I was high as a motherfucker on marijuana. Yeah. So that, yeah. that, I, I that, always got, I always got, I always got stuck with Tommy or Theo when we remember we would go backstage and stuck. go to those tables. Yeah, stuck. We'd go to those you fucking tables and we'd sit down. And Tommy would get so bored after a couple of minutes, he'd get up and go sit with Boone. Then yeah. I'd go sit with D like we'd all like. Okay, enough for you. I'm gonna go over here now. We didn't listen to anybody. Tommy you know? had a tendency to disappear at Tommy comic cons disappear. when him and I were together. And, and I'd go outside and go, did anybody see Flanagan? And they go, oh, he's in the back talking to people, having a cigarette. I go, but there's 10,000 fans. 10,000 people. <laughs> he's outside talking right. shit with everybody. And I'd go out and go, you got to come in. And he goes, oh, yeah, why don't you just hang out for a minute? I'm like, Tommy on his own time. Tommy on his own time. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Nothing better. You two motherfuckers. I'm so happy you called me, guys, and asked me to come back on your show. You're the and, best. Uh, well, I don't give a fuck. I, like I was saying to Kim earlier, I will talk about fucking drywall. I don't care what we talk about. You, you Just are spend time with you two. Fuckers. You're you're the you're the king of it all, Flanagan. And for Rossi and I to be, you know, paddling upstream with this incredible little podcast thing that we got going on, it, it's hard not to kind of want you every week so when we get you a few times over the next it's just magic for us and right now yeah you know I'm I, mean, old. I don't, I, I don't Man, know don't ever forget that, 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 forget the brotherhood bullshit because we're beyond that we yeah. are, we're all we're all family whatever you yeah. fucking need from me i'm always there for you always always so well ma massive fucking love and respect bro right back at you you know i saw booney about a month ago and saw the baby that was pretty amazing oh uh, yeah, so I know your I know your ears so are beautiful. burning. You've got to see that kid. She is just I, I, yeah, I've seen her. She's gorgeous, gorgeous, right? I, I, just, I haven't met her obviously because of COVID in, and shit. In person, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so, we were you know, we, we were you know, we, we were at a wedding, and where were you, Rossi, at the fucking wedding? We were there. No, I was working. He you was know working. Me, I was come. fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is yeah, yeah. hectic. Name is Hanum. Well, you know me. Too busy I, working. I like to hide out. Um, so check this out. Here's what's wild, bro. Where after the last time we spoke, now we're in the middle of season four, right? Yeah. Now we're watching this for the first time. This is going to be really entertaining, but I'm hungry. So I'm no, go for it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's something I want to bring up. 
This was the season that. where you started wearing John Varvados all the time, and you were looking. Fuck, you look good. Became so I would, I would have married you. You look so good. It's disgusting. You tried so many times. <laughs> and I understood why oh, you were. I never understood why you're always in my in my trailer, butt naked. I just thought it was something. <laughs> it was some Canadian thing. It but, is. And it, Looking for my exactly moves. <laughs> Isn't it butt naked? Was. Isn't it butt but naked? Butt naked. Butt yeah. Naked. But everybody B-T-T. say I think people say butt naked sometimes. But we naked. say butt yeah, naked. Yeah, like say, butt. Boom. Yeah, B U C K. No. Fuck. Do, you, do you remember? <laughs> you remember? <laughs> oh my god. It was me and Coachy in my trailer, <laughs> and you came in and went, you were on a this is when you started. Oh, there you go, the 40 hours war. Drinking <laughs> kids is good for you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not straight out of his fucking tap. He doesn't no. go to his backyard and fill these bottles up. It's from a stream, <laughs> a stream in a, a mountain in Switzerland. <laughs> but you but you came in the trailer one day and it was hilarious. Me, me and Coach were talking because you were getting fit as fuck and da, da, da. Yeah. Me and Coach thinking, fuck, we got we got to get shit together. And you came in with this little measuring thing, and you're yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna measure your body. <laughs> Body, your fat. body fat. Oh, body your body fat. fat. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah, yes, I do. I do. You put the thing on me and the thing blew up. <laughs> yeah. On you. yeah, yeah, bro. So. And then I've never seen this happen. It was because it's a plastic machine. When it saw Boone, it grew legs and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> It just scampered away, man. It scampered away. It said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it. So here's so listen, real quick, because we don't want to take up too much of your time. Here's Uh, this is an lesson. You fuck that. This is this is the most this was one of the most important episodes because something was happening. This is right before Chibs finds juice, which you and I have talked about the scene a million times, right? When you found me in the last episode. Yeah. So In this one, what's so weird is that I don't know if it was ever written, but in the last two to three episodes while we're watching, Chibs always seemed to know that something was going on with Juice, like before anything. Like no one else knew. You kept, they would always cut to you, always cut to you, always cut to you. Looking you at would, Juice. You were looking just at Just looking like, and knowing something was going on. Uh, do you know why? Why? I read the script. But, but I don't think it was in the script. <laughs> that, 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 that you, was a fucking attempt at a joke. Thanks, oh. boys. <laughs> just shit me down in place. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you, do you, because it got really bad with them. If you can rewind your head for a second and think, do you think Chibs, even after he found out everything, still loved you? So do you think he hated him and despised him? Never. Never, never in a million years. It just was his boy, just mm. was his boy, and he broke his fucking heart. You, you, you broke his heart. You broke old Chibs' heart. Yeah, and, yeah. And then when the, when the whole thing was going on, there was too many. Th- and you and you, the way you played it, you played it uh, so fucking well. But you played it like you made it suspicious. Ah. And I and and it was like you know like a brother, an instinct, family instinct, if you like, and. Uh, I said, no, well, this kid, you're not shooting straight, you kid. There's something uh, going on here. There you go, Tommy. And I, I had my on him. Because, uh, yeah, but never did I ever lose love for, never in a million years. Because the never. amount, like where we, we, I just finished the episode wow. and the amount of concern, it ends with you coming into the clubhouse and being like, I called him. He's not at the warehouse. He's not this. And like, Chiz was so concerned. And I, again, I'm seeing this for the first time and I'm looking at him like, Holy shit, he was like really concerned. And I'm and then I fast forwarded my brain to when we were sitting in the diner and you were so mad. And now it's like, oh, I he you was broke so my mad. It's, it's, the, it's the Fredo mo. It's Fredo. You yeah. broke my heart. You yeah. broke my fucking oh, that's heart. So fucking good, Tommy. And that's what it was. It was it was that Fredo moment. And because I, I loved and adored you. And, uh, and then and I knew you were up to no good. And here, not knowing the script, but just reading how the story was going and how the whatever the fuck, and uh, it was and the way you were playing it. You were being suspicious, but not being suspicious. But to me, I, I read you because I because Chip knew juice. Well, let 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 me tell you something, Tom, because I don't know the last time you fucking seen the show because we haven't seen many of them like you. I've never been talking to you, but Thomas, I have to tell you, and I, I I told you already when we talked this this week, 
these these last two shows plus the one that Theo and I are going to review when so we say good. goodbye to you, Tommy. I had no fucking idea. The way they cut to you, to Chibs and to Juice, subtly, it was some of the most remarkable editing on this fucking show because I had never seen it and I'd never felt it. And when, when this, I saw this is it, this, I'm sorry. No, no, that's it. I'm just saying that the way they cut it, Tom, you would have been so fucking happy. So proud this, is the, this is a, this is a cocaine episode. No, where this we, is the one. This is the one where you go. I'm going to find him. And, I, and Juice hangs himself at the end of the episode. And the next okay. one opens up with you finding him. That's right. Right. OK. But here's the trip. This is what I said last episode. In the last episode, not to get all confusing here, we were in the warehouse and you made a choice. And this was fucking brilliant when you watch it. We're in the warehouse and we're talking. And I say to Chibs, Juice says, do you ever think about the rules? Like, you know, how antiquated they are and this and that. And you chose to sit up higher because on this you knew something was ladder going on. thing. Yeah, you're Oh, up my God. Tommy, yes. what, a, what a brilliant that, choice. Was that, was, that in Disney, was that in a Disney ranch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there? Were, yeah, you were up high and you're looking Fuck down. Yeah, I remember that scene. That was that because... Mm-hmm. Because we were playing that, and, and we, we we had a little we had a little sense of what was going down, but yeah. but we had to, you know, and I had no idea that that you, that, that you had done that and whatever. But uh, so, do you maybe, think maybe that's, maybe yeah. that's a magic of the show that we only knew so much? Correct. You know what I mean? Because correct. Uh, and then and and then the rest is is here and feeling so right. what's going on and, and, and being surrounded by actors who you love and trust and uh, yeah. you see the performance and the rest and that and you go, aha, we have fucking money here. So maybe, maybe that's what it was. But I remember that. I remember that very clearly. Actually, do you remember Joe, uh, one, of the, one of the grips? Yeah. Joe yeah. took an incredible photograph of me sitting on those steps. Oh, I bet. Mo I bet he did. And, and he sent me it not long ago and uh, it was like, wow. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, yeah, you so you I, touched on something there that's so true. I guess you know with a lot of the newer shows, you know everything, right? You get you get. Let's say you're doing eight or ten or whatever it is, five in yeah. Kim's case, the new HBO one. You go, oh, I okay, I know the whole arc. This is what happens, right? Right? Like yeah. I know. And we would get the script sometimes a day before we would shoot and go. Yeah. No, the night before, so fuck. The night yeah. before, yeah. and you'd go. Yeah. Oh, I hope I'm making the right choice here. <laughs> like, I hope this, yeah. I don't know how this is going to play out. I hope, I hope this works for down the road. Yeah. Because you didn't know what was coming. Yeah. That's fucking crazy to think about it nowadays. Like, it's almost like you're flying by the seat of your pants, but I guess that's what makes it so great in a way. It's funny that we was talking about this because um, I was talking to the showrunner. Um, on this, what I'm doing right now in Chicago, yeah. and uh, yeah. so he kind of he was laying out the storyline over the tent. I went, you know what? Leave it there. That's all I need to know. Wow. Because I would rather discover it. You know, you want to know the nuts and bolts, but I would rather discover his journey as Love I it. go along. Love it, Tom. Because Love it. Uh, as actors, you know what I'm talking about here. Because yeah. it's because then you can. It, because the, the, the best thing we could do on camera is tell the fucking truth. That's right. And when well, it's fresh and new this, like that, it, this is, this it, is, it feels this, like the truth. This is why Chibs and Juice, for me, being a viewer for the first time, really, seeing these three shows run back to back to back, your, your, your subtlety, Flanagan, was off the charts. You saw through Theo's heartbreak uh, breathing, He's hiding something. We don't know what, but we're going to talk to the kid. We're going to talk to the kid. And then Theo takes yeah. a step further by going, wait a minute. Let me just go outside and everyone take a break for 15 yeah. minutes. And the look that they put the camera on your face, Tommy, it's just, I, I just know yeah. that something is going to go down. Chibs is going to find out. Oh my fucking God. Anyway, it really, I'll never, out. I'll never forget. And this is why he, he, I fucking love you, Tommy, because the way you, there, there are certain people who talk circles and, and never make sense. We were out somewhere or a comic con or something or press. We may have been doing press and someone said, Tommy, what makes you such a great actor? What makes you so like, you know, it's just so engaging. You go, 
just tell the fucking truth. Yeah, how about and that? I'll never forget <laughs> it. And and like it was well, so like you go just tell the fucking easy. truth. It was easy for you to say that, Tommy. Because and I just went. You are. I went. That's, oh, what it is? Is that not what it is? Is that not what we do? We try to tell it. We're, we're lying bastards. <laughs> try to tell the yeah. truth is on. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. That, to me, that's the gig. That's you know what game. I mean? Okay, okay, you, you've read the script and you know what's going on. And like I said, that's why in this show, I, I, I know what's going on to a certain point. And I said, no, that's all I need to know. I need to know who the fuck I am or who Walter Flynn is. Mm -hmm. But the rest, let's, let's discover it as you do in life because I don't want to know the future. The future doesn't happen. The future mm -hmm. happens when it happens. So... Congrats, congrats on that gig, Tommy. How yeah, you hanging I in? love that. How show. you hanging in up there, buddy? How's Chicago? Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Chai Town. Chai Chai Town is uh, incredible. Uh, is it I, getting I, better with the vaccines and everything? Is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm double vaxxed. I'm oh, sure good for you guys. Are too. And, Me too. Yeah. Uh, good job, you have Tommy. to be. I mean, kids. I mean, I mean, whatever your fucking politics are. Just fucking share the love, man. Just fucking put. It's I mean, not, it's like it's not even about politics. It's, simple. it's so no, silly. It's, it's so silly. It's so silly. Ridiculous. It's like I had oh, the the putting microphones or some shit. Yeah. Go go eat yeah. McDonald's. I guarantee you, you're gonna get more shit in your body than that no, fucking. Microphone. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll please. tell you something funny because I'll I'll never. I always say I'll never tell anybody. I don't give opinions because opinions create adversaries. But I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't give opinions. This is all I'll say. I had a buddy who was like, I'm not getting a vaccine. He's like, nah, man, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. This is the same kid who I think used to do like a pound of cocaine a week. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> you, you were like fucking doing drugs off a toilet. Wait, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to yeah. wait. You yeah. were doing what? you were doing drugs when you're at 14 years old, and you're not going to get a fucking vaccine. I'm not putting that on my body. Yeah, I'm not putting get that. that fuck it, yeah. <laughs> what? That's fucking crazy. That's shite. So fucking here's, nuts. Here's the thing. Uh, my whole without, thing with it is without friend be a. Uh... <laughs> no names. No names. No names. <laughs> no names mentioned. But listen, man. Hey, listen, everybody. This is the greatest thing about being a, a human being. You can do whatever you want. That's the thing. Go do it. Do, yeah, do whatever you go want. Do it. I don't, whatever, go whatever, love your best whatever's fucking clever. Life. Whatever's clever. Yeah. Do what yeah, you man. want. And then, then you know, surely I, don't listen to us. Whatever you want to do. Do, do. do you guys do you guys want to talk more about the episode? Because because I know we, we spoke no no not be disrespectful or rude or anything, but I just think we, we spoke about this the last time. So maybe we should reintroduce the audience to what the fuck we're talking about. And oh, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 it was it was probably no, it's not probably. It was the only scene where we took control. Mm. And as far as I'm concerned, we shot a beautiful moment. That's when you, you when you found me, when you found Let's me on the ground. Let's talk about that right now. Yep. Because yeah, we're, that, we're reviewing cause, that. Because you know I'm going to ramble. You know, I'm, Let's I'm talk ramble. about it right no, no, now. I want, and I want you to talk about that. But I also, let me set the stage. Yeah, please. You do. find, Chibs finds juice. Now, now remember now. For the audience that's listening, this is coffee, a big cup of coffee, by the way. Yeah. Why, yeah. why do they make coffee cups so big? Anyway, there you go. It's a Chicago. clear one. Too. I like clear coffee cups. So too, here's son. the thing you, nothing was written about you picking up the chain. Nothing was written about anything. Nothing. Nothing. It was blah, 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 gone. Gone. It was it, a very was, short gone. It was like an eighth of a page if we were lucky. And Which this was also, heart. this was the first wow, and wow. beginning. Remember now, this was the beginning. The one in the warehouse, two episodes before, was kind of our first one-on-one -on -one scene alone. Ever. Okay. Okay. And then we did a fuck ton after that, right? So the it started with the warehouse one. Then we get to... Uh, Little little ones like in this episode where he came up to me and you're, hey, uh, where you been? How did the piss test go? But then we started going to the ones in the bathroom where we're like all those the crying ones and the but the the one at the diner down the road. But this one was really to me the real beginning because everything's out on the table, right? So tell just tell them how that went down because to me it's probably my favorite scene that I've done in the, in this series. How this went down, dear audience, was um, me and Theo were basically an eighth of a page is uh, 
Bulls. And it, it, it's an end of the bench. In whiskey terms, it's two shots, it's two fingers. But um, <laughs> it, it was there was nothing there. It was like, just hangs himself, Chibs finds him. That's it. Nothing else. And we showed up in Griffith Park that night to shoot That's it. Right. Griffith Park, and, and, baby. And I, I, I came in, I came in there, fucking red hot. I was thinking, what the fuck? My boy, my boy, just is going to kill himself. Our attempts to kill himself, and I'm just supposed to go <coughs> wipe the dust off his back and fucking be angry. That's it. And I thought, no, this is not the way. This was supposed to be. So me and just put our heads together. I mean, sorry, it's me and Theo put our heads together and thought, you know what, fuck this. And we said, fuck this. Let's fuck do this it. properly. He just fucking tried to kill himself. And for me, just to go, okay, that's fine. It's okay. No, nope. no, no. Nope. It broke my fucking heart. And to see him, and then this whole fuck. Anyway, the whole scene we just created. Whatever you saw that night it was a DP, the director. And mostly me and Theo that put yeah. that shit together. Yeah. Because yeah. the show the show was too busy spinning around. The well, stars what you, the what show, you just is, said, we were in Griffin Park. It was a frater day. It was one of those things where it's three at night. Usually. Everyone yeah. wants to go home for their day off. And they spent about three and a half hours on the stunt guy jumping out of the tree, which was great. But they, we, don't need we, we were overlapping from the next episode, right? So we were doing both because there was a hang and whatever. But they weren't getting to like the meat. And sometimes, and we all know this, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll work on a stunt forever, work on a stunt. And then when it comes to the dialogue and the actual scene, they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, we got like 30 minutes. We got 30 minutes, guys. And you're I like, know. What, no. the, what the fuck? I, I, I'm sitting under that tree. I'm holding you. I'm hugging you. Yeah. And we played that whole scene of pulling a chain and I end up hugging you and going, fuck you, you little fucker. And I know you fucked up. And you, like the whole Fredo thing, like I keep repeating yeah, myself, yeah, like Fredo, yeah. Fredo. And you, you fucking broke my heart, but I fucking can't stop loving you. Yeah. And it was a beautiful moment. And and and, and it's tries to condense in this bullshit. <laughs> but we refused to do that. Then we got a round of applause from yeah. the crew. Yeah. When you get a round about that's our audience. When you get that, yep. our crew, especially on a Friday, day. especially on a Friday day when they're all fucking. Especially on out. a Friday. <laughs> but you also you also did something, and and when people go back and watch this, I want them to understand. You picked up the chain, and you looked at it like you were looking at this heavy chain, and it was like while you were looking at it. You were processing what the fuck could it have happened. It wasn't just about the hanging. Why did he hang himself? What happened with the drugs? Everything. Miles, everything. What's going it on? All together through yes. the chain. So you were using the chain as like a conduit to like put it all together. And I'm sitting there in silence and feeling so ashamed behind the chain. And I'm watching you look at it and not look at me until you do look at me. So fucking looked, good. And when he looks at me, I broke because it was like I'm oh. I know what's coming. Yeah. So fucking good, boys. And it was so just like there's those layers of like the chain's not written. Him looking at the chain isn't written. None, none, none of that is written. written. That was, and it's that was like me and you, that, that is so fucking that's what makes the relationship and all that. And remember now, this goes into the fight. When he fucking beats yep. the shit out of him, this goes yep. into the diner scene. Yep. Many many seasons later, this goes into the bathroom scene when he tells yep. me fucked up. Yep. So all these things start from that moment, right then and there. And that's, that was it. That's why. And I think what what Tommy said is so important for young actors, for young artists. And by the way, young anything. If you fucking are feeling a blot, like you have to do something, you know what's in your head, and you want to do it, fucking do it. Don't wait for someone to give you permission. Because that scene wouldn't have been there if we didn't do that. Correct. Yes. Fuck, yes. man. So good. Never be afraid to fucking shout, scream, and have an opinion, have an idea. For God's sake. If, 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 I mean, how many times have you been on a stage? Maybe this is a personal thing for me. There's so many times I, I, I've, I've been on a set or a stage, and I've thought, 
oh god, I've this idea. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> All the time. All and, the time. And you know what? Yeah, and nine, maybe ninety-nine percent of the time is dog shit. Yeah. But the thing is, say it. Yeah. Just fucking scream it, shout it. You know what? Can we try this? Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. It's either going to work. Yeah. It may or may and not I, work. And but I why love not? that. I love that because, especially because sometimes you will get that. You know, a good amount of time you'll get. Yeah. Let's give that a shot. And sometimes yeah. you'll get the definitive when, when the person goes, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> but that. But, but, but we're all saying so the take, same thing. Take the slings and say, the autos. We're you know all saying I mean? the same thing. That doesn't matter if it's not really what we were. It's the ideas. It's the birth of ideas. Flanagan, yes. and we're going to get into it in season six and seven. You and I came up with more fucking ideas to get through this beautiful show that I can't wait to talk about them because they're funny, they're fucking real, and it's guys like us in the show with so many others of the supporting beautiful parts that came up with ideas every single fucking scene. Sometimes yeah. they worked, sometimes they didn't, but it's the formation of the ideas yeah, that was but exciting. We, fucking, but we put the work in. We didn't, we, we we really didn't did go it, there. We, we, didn't, we did not go there half-cocked, for want of a better analogy. We didn't go there fucking. No. Nope. We went there. We came there. To, to make that show what it is because because it, it was special to us at the time and and, yeah. and we all loved each other and we don't and we still do but yeah. we, 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 but we're, we're not gonna you're not getting you know we're not coming here to give you fucking second prize but here to be the best we can fucking yeah man be, you, know, you know what i'm saying planning so, it. when am i gonna see you tommy when are you coming home you're fucking looking at me you dopey no, bastard when am i gonna you see, see you little fucker I want, to, I want an arm wrestle you, you fucker. When? Uh, you know, you know you'll lose. Um, I will be back California in August. Hopefully, right. you'll be there. Rossi, where are you? No, I won't be there. I'll be in. Uh, at that Thanks time, fuck. I'll be Thanks in fuck. Atlanta no, 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 or Vancouver. Uh, okay, shut up. But I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there in spirit. Uh, um, I, I'm always here for you guys. And uh, Love you, Tommy. Rossi, I, I'll see you in California. How do I get bottles of 40 water delivered to Whatever Chicago? you want. You're in Chicago. I'll send them to you. In the quick story. <laughs> quick, quick, quick story. Do we have time for a quick story? Yeah. Sure, of course. Check this fucking out. Can you see this? No, because you're not no. pointing to the camera. Because oh, there, there it is. There it is, yeah. yeah. Who right. gave you that, can you read, Tommy? Can, can you read that? Yeah. yeah. Protective division. Let's say it okay. again. Talk. Obama. Secret Service. Oh, that's oh, so awesome. I met, these, I met these two kids. Maybe you can cut this out, whatever. But I met these no, two kids. No, we don't kids. cut anything. We don't cut anything out. I met these two kids, uh, you know, they're these beautiful couple, boy, girl, and um, the sweetest fucking couple. And I'm, I'm in this restaurant in Chicago, and look, obviously, bass, and it was all, you know, proper. So I hear Braveheart, I'm, fuck, I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> so they so so they send so they send drinks over. You know, I'm not drinking. I'm like, well, thanks anyway, whatever. And, I, and then I start talking to these two kids, and they're the secret service who look after Michelle and That's Barack Obama. Gorgeous. And they were huge fans of the show, huge fans of Braveheart. We That's to, I spoke gorgeous. About, I spoke. I spoke about you two horrible fuckers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I spoke <laughs> about Boone, the whole yeah. thing, and they give me this. This no, that's thing. so great, Flanagan. It's spectacular. And it was just, it was one of those magic moments. And anyway, they, they were beautiful. It's a magic and, uh, moment. Oh, and now they're thing. following you and they've tapped your phone and they're listening. <laughs> so, I don't care. I don't I'm care either. Son. Hey, by the this way, Tommy. Girl, by, by the way, you're going to make you. some extra. <laughs> You're gonna make some extra money tonight. I just saw on the TV the Gladiators on CBS all night long. I gotta watch the fucking thing because whenever oh, it's on, I, I have to watch fuck, the whole thing. I love thing. that movie. Oh, hey, movie. who's the guy? The guy just passed away recently from Gladiator. The 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 older guy, no. the guy who was uh in charge who, of who, who? fucking phenomenal actor, super tan, had the white no, hair. Tell me. The older guy, they, they come on. Oh Somebody, no, he's he, he's been gone for a while. Um, you talking about Oliver Reed? Years Oliver Reed's been gone for a while. Wow, he died. Reed he died during. Oh my God, he died Ollie during was the my, shooting of it. All he was by the fuck is a legend, and me. When did Oliver Reed die? During fucking gladiator. filming, you fuck. Keep up <laughs> in two thousand. You fucking twenty years <laughs> ago. Twenty years I'm ago. I'm so out of it. That's I'm all right. So out of it. I'm Back so in your corner, Theo. Thank you, Tommy. We love you. I love you, Tommy. We love you, Tommy.
Guys, it as does. always. Love to Dina. I'm, I'm, I'm always here for you guys. And, and uh, as you do. Lo love, love to you. your babies. Love to the girls. Yeah, and tell Joe and the crew we said hello. I'm uh, I'm big fans of all of them, and I can't wait to see what you guys do over there. I'm yeah, excited. you're killing yeah, it, Tommy. You're fucking yeah. killing it. I'm working with yeah. some amazing people, and I, I tell so you what, glad. man, I'm fucking, it, it's good stuff. And uh, I wish nothing but love and fucking greatness for you both. Hey, Flanagan, uh, when yes. in doubt, act like Kim Coates. <laughs> he always does. When in doubt, act like <laughs> Kim Coates. I never get that doubtful. I don't get that. <laughs> Did you say doubtful or desperate? Is it doubtful <laughs> or desperate? <laughs> desperate, that's better. Hey, Tommy, yeah, you know, wait, wait yeah, hold on. Before you go, before you go, let's tell them one story that they never say. What does Kim do for last looks? He has someone come in with the oh big man. Tell, tell him what he does. I, <laughs> tell oh, him yeah. what he does. Meta, oh, no. meta, meta, meta. I have, I have a mirror taped to my forehead. Shut it up, shut it up, shut it up. <laughs> so just so everyone's <laughs> clear what we're, ta what we're talking <laughs> about is right before they call action, we do a thing called last looks where you want to make sure that the person who's on camera looks good. Kim is the only one who they come on to set with a giant fucking, fucking I wish I had a mirror. A giant, giant big one. Don't be afraid of it. It's a so big they one, like come in size, and he like gets big. into it. Yeah, no, big. And then we played, we played that joke once where like 17 people went up to him with mirrors, if you remember. No, no, no. Well, no. You remember the, the, no, the last night the last yeah. night when the, 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 the finale of all finales, when they, the show ended. It's, it's the everyone, end of me and Tommy. Everybody mm -hmm. ran up with medals. For yeah, there was 75 was mirrors in my hilarious. face. And Han yeah. Hanum's got the biggest fucking laugh going on. Flanagan's peeing his pants. We'll get to there. We'll get there. We'll get you. there. That's Goodbye, fun. Tommy. Love you. I'm always here. I love, love you. you. Love you, brother. Fucking love you. Good luck love with the ranch, Chad. I love you. Love you, love love you Tommy. You. Bye. Mwah. Massive love. No, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> look at him trying to no, look at him he trying can't to get out. Stuff. There he is. There he is. Wow. 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 He's a force. He's just a force. I didn't even know that was really going to happen until it happened, until you and I made it happen. Yeah, I didn't that, think it was going to happen. That's that, why I didn't say That anything. fucking white-haired Scottish bastard. Yeah. Who's just so fucking talented, heart of gold. I mean, he'll come on in a bathroom at 30,000 feet if, yeah. if, you know. He's like a surprise. He's like that surprise that just always pops up. And, you know, the truth is, we've said this now so many times, it's exhausting that, you know, us three were in that trailer together. We had the three banger, you know, we were All together every year for seven years. Every year. <clears throat> and you know what? You know, it, you know, I say this till, till, you know, till people are sick of listening, but they don't do that anymore. Like meaning like six months on six months off, six months right. on six months, off, you know, where, you know, you're going back to work every six months, you're going to be in the same position. You're going to see the same people. You're going to be in the same trailers. And that went on for fucking almost eight years. And yeah. that forms something that, you know, it calcifies relationships that just can't, it just can't be duplicated in yeah. a way especially because the time we were in our life. So to see Flanagan right now, after everything we've all been through together, yeah. separate, all of it, the highs, the lows, the middles, the, the, it's really just amazing. So let's get into this fucking episode um, because you know what? Rossi, I, it's a good I just got to say, I'm so happy right now. There's something about you, me and Tommy and fucking everyone else in the cast for that matter. But Tommy, that icing on our cake on that show for you and I, um, what a day. All right, we've got 45 minutes to zip through this. Here we go. Show. So uh, oh. it starts with my voice when I say previously on, which always, by the way, excites me. Because I, I think said, I think that was my boy Theo's voice in the intro. And it was, so you, wasn't it? Yeah. So excited. So it starts with the prayer thing. Let me tell you exactly how that went down. Um, yeah, how'd that work out for you? It wasn't written. on a little fucking religion there, Theo. It wasn't written like that. It just said uh, juice. It said juice was on his knee, possibly praying or talking to himself. So Kurt and I had a sidebar and he's like, uh, do you know any prayers? I said, Kurt, I was raised fucking Catholic. Yeah. I mean, I know all the prayers. I said, you know, I'm not, not a praying type, but you know, I know them all. So he's like, all right. 
what do you want to do? I said, oh, I'll figure it out on the day. And then, you know, I, the one always the, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended you. I detest all my sins, not because, of, and it's because the one you're sorry, right? You know, you, you, you feel whatever. So I just kept saying it over and over because that's the beginning of him. Beautiful. Fucking well done. Out. Um, well done. It was great. So then Gemma, I guess, is going into the car seats in Tara's car and she finds this note yep. that we know that we know Unser wrote. Yeah. Um, she says an amazing line because Gemma is obviously shooken up about it, too. She says, you don't have, you don't have a normal life, baby. You this one. You have this one. Fuck. See, every, every once in a while, Sutter will drop a fucking line that you need to stop and reflect on what that line was so easily said, baby, you don't have a normal life. You have this one. Sorry. It's kind of one of those lines that you wish you would say in your real life to someone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Where's the writing in real life for, to help me out with that conversation. Yeah. Like that's one of those ones that would be a game stopper with your friends. If you said it in real life, like so, if somebody was going through something, you said that. They'd go, Whoa. Whoa. I have a question for you. Yeah. Please answer me this question. Yeah. Gemma also says to Tara, before we move on to the next scene, she goes, if this was the club. Now, Theo, what the fuck would our club or anything threaten Tara for anyway? Right. Where does that come from? Don't know. I know there's issues with Clay and Gemma. I know Unser is worried now because Clay might do something rash and Gemma might be thinking... But for her to say, if this was the club. Right. Isn't that enough? Her just saying that, like her Isn't saying it? that should make Tara go, OK, I'm leaving. Yeah, like I'm out. I'm going home to I'm Chicago. Out. Goodbye. I, I, I don't I, I didn't get that. It was too much for me. All right. Here we go. OK, so here we go. I mean, Clay, Jackson, and the crew go to meet with the Mayans. And this becomes a very big thing. I'm going to let you do this because uh, I, I just have to say that. Uh, the one thing I noticed about the scene and, and I want to get into it is yeah. you had the hard task of doing something that I've had to do multiple times, which is very hard in the middle of a scene. You have to drop the one comedic line. Was this when we were with the girls underneath the cocaine yes. and all that shit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes they work and sometimes they really don't, you know, but they're so um, hard to do just, when no one's playing with you. It's just you. It's just me. It's just yeah. you playing the game. Just be one line. And everybody's yeah. sitting there going, uh, -huh, cause you've done it 400 times. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got pretty good. You were always good at it. I got pretty good at just dropping them in and not giving a fuck. You, giving you, a the, fuck. the audience is going to laugh with me or they're not. Right. You know, I remember that whole fucking day. Can I ask you something like a phone rings for Jax, right? Mm -hmm. And we drop everything. everything. That really frustrated me. Ter ter Tara called. Tara called. We got to Tara called. What? Gotta go. Do we got to go now? Go. Can't we just yeah. wait a second? And no one said, by the way, no one said now. No one I said that. no. Like, does she have a headache? Yeah. Did she, did she, did her credit card get declined? <laughs> like what, what, what happened on the way home? Like, yeah, what what? Happened? like the fact that everybody went, Oh, we got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Fuck in off. real life, in real life, if you and I were at a, drug operation in a, in a, in a trap house. And we were sitting there <laughs> and we were watching, we were watching cocaine or whatever the drug was being made. And it was Charlie crazy. just said, that's a whole lot of cocaine. And we got more cocaine than, than we've ever seen. And you said to me, Theo, you didn't even say Theo. You just went, gotta go. Gotta, gotta go. go. It's die. It's die. Gotta go. I'd go. Hold on, bud. What's up? You, what happened? She had a car right? accident. What happened? Yeah. Can Something. You, do you want to go up and make a call? Do yeah. you want to go call yeah, her? And go. I'll be down there here dealing with our drugs. Not like, us. You... Not no. the elves. We put down no. our fucking, our hammers and our spikes. We'll, hi ho, hi ho. It's off to the bikes we go. Anyway. I hate silly. to use the word silly. It was silly. silly. Okay. So now, did this was something. Did you catch this before the chaotic? The chaotic scene happens and he says, how far is your shot, Doc? Did you hear that? I, I missed that. So Clay says, how far is your shot, Doc? And I guess they always have someone around that if they get shot, like a doctor who handles Oh, my them. God. Yeah. 
how far is your shot doc? Oh, wow. We make it shot every day. How far is your doctor to come fix it up? Yeah. Too far. You're coming with me, Emilio. Get yeah. in the fucking van. We'll take you home. Yeah. Cool. I missed that line, but sure. I'll buy that. I hope I got it right, but I rewinded it. So if I didn't, that just means I'm really more so tired than I think how, I am. How, <laughs> mm -hmm. how in the world did Fox allow Hunnam to turn into Steve McQueen? And I know he did a lot of that riding. He didn't a do lot the of zigzag it. around because why would they let him go without a helmet on? How was that? Remember that fight we had in, yep. when we were supposedly in Arizona? Well, we're not yep. going to wear helmets. Oh, no. Yes, you are. Or you're not coming to work. Yeah. How did Charlie get away with that, bro? Yeah, you know, and listen, by the way, his stunt double in the beginning, that rip out he did when he pulled off, that was the only time I think he probably used the stunt double. Obviously, Charlie was a fucking incredible rider. And those are some he, really he became an incredible rider, Charlie did. Yeah, he became incredible. And but the guy in the beginning who's ripping out like right away, yeah. that was someone else because he did like oh, yeah. that drag of the tire and yeah. kind of went. Um here. And he's riding with no helmet. I mean, you know, listen, I don't know. I got to be honest. I'm actually surprised they let us ride bikes to work every day for seven years. I think they just realized that we were riding motorcycles for the show, like, like wildfire by season two on, on up. And they couldn't stop our normal life of you're not allowed because you're right. If we weren't riding, I don't know, bro, you know, like they couldn't stop. Yeah. Us. I just, I I'm actually surprised by that. So the no helmet thing, but here's, it, the guy backs up and kills his own guy so he doesn't talk. Right? He, he, that was fucking crazy. That was horrible. It was horrible. Can I ask? Pretty good stunts of, in there, Theo. Hey, pretty good stunts. Great, great stunts. Great, great, great song. Rock song great him, montage. Right? And by yeah. the way, if you if you really think about it, this is one of those scenes that's a mile long. It starts with you guys going to meet Alvarez. Goes Correct. through the trap house to the guys coming down and shooting him to this chase to the chase like it this is this is going this scene. this is this like is, the beginning of goodfellas with that yeah. single camera that went on through the fucking kitchen on through the fuck went on for Everywhere. an hour and a half and it's stunning it's weird long but here's again i'm going to ask the logical question there's a lot of shots being fired does no one peek their head out the window is nobody <laughs> calling the cops He's like, I said with? to myself last night, Ross is going to be talking about the gunfire. Why? Because I am. Why no, is nobody? You, I don't know what's going on down there. Hey, hey the get away from me. Something. Yeah. Hey, but you got away. Like, why is nobody doing that? Because they just don't. It's weird. They just don't. So Unser pulls in while Alvarez is being brought to the clubhouse. Um, Juice comes in acting all suspect right away. Yeah. Right. Obviously got a lot going down on his mind. Um, we're going on lockdown again. How many times have we been on lockdown on this show? I've counted 118. <laughs> I've counted 118. <laughs> now I have no idea, but a lot. Okay. <laughs> Fucking a man. No, what it always it always slays me when when we go to a, to to everybody. Okay, lockdown. Everyone back to the club. What makes you think the club's going to be that much safer than where we are right now? I know. What? What? And do we shop at Costco? Like, how do we have food <laughs> for everybody? How do we have food? Is it Sam's Club? Who's got the membership? Gemma, who has the <laughs> membership to Costco? Is it a prospect? Like, when you're a prospect, they're like, "Here's your cut. Here's your prospect. Go get a cut. Costco Here's, card. Here's your Costco, Costco card." card. You have to buy food for 900 million people in China. A lot of toilet paper, a lot of yeah. clinics. Yeah, how many milk. toilets are in the clubhouse? Uh, one, two, three, I think. They, I mean, they're not when we're on lockdown, we've been on lockdown with 200 people in the room. There has to be porta potties. <laughs> there has to be. There's no way. There has to be porta potties. You bet. <laughs> Plus so porta potties yeah. and Sam's Club cards. Um, so we're on lockdown again, right? Um. Chibs is staring at Juice again. We just talked about this. He knows uh -huh. something's going on. Um, this is where Juice basically, I never realized this, never thought yeah. about it. Yeah. Juice says cartels target families, and that's what tells Tara about cartels. Yeah. Didn't know that. Um, I, I forgot about it, but yeah. at the time, it's a beautiful, beautiful fucking line. And it's because he's freaking out. You're starting to lose your mind now. Losing his mind. 
Yeah, you know, is, is this past when I would I flick the cigarette butt at you? Is that past that yet? Yeah. Or? So let me ask you that. I wanted to ask you because I I wrote it. Oh no no no. We're coming up to that. Um, no, this is it. Let me ask you this on that. Why that choice? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly where it is, but I remember seeing it last night when I was watching the show and I, I fucking remember that. And I remember in, um, taxi driver when Harvey Keitel, when De Niro came up to the stoop quite near the end of the show, really, and was not listening. He's not fucking listening. Get the, not, and he flicked his butt right in De Niro's chest, like right fucking hard. And you, I think for the first time ever on, on this show, you weren't listening. You didn't even stop. You just fucking walked right by me, Jax, Opie, Chibs. And I'm going, hey, and I fucking flicked that goddamn butt at you like and that that did nothing. So we know you're off. Something's he's not listening. Something's going on. Yeah, that was right as I come off the bike and yeah. do that thing. And I, I and again, I just remember seeing that again. I don't you know know what's happening behind me, but I know you know seeing that for the first time. I was like, these are some interesting choices because Bobby's like, what the fuck's wrong with him? You're kind of like, hey, you know, because you're used to him coming in and joking around and doing whatever. And then Chibs has obviously been suspect since the beginning. Um, Jax is on the stakeout. Can I do what's going on here? Do we do like private detective training? What's happening here? Like, how, do we, <laughs> how do we, what are we always on stakeouts for? Well, like, I just love this? how we've gone from we got to go. I'm not going to tell you why, but we're, and we drop everything we're doing to, oh, wait, Jax needs to be Steve McQueen. He needs to zip through all the fucking alleys. Oh, wait. Now we're going to espionage to really find out what's going on. And I'm going to hide behind a, a, a dumpster until the boys show up. And that's exactly where we're at. So we, fucking great, by the way, that you just said that. Cause it's like, wait a second. There was a mad rush, mad rush. To get out. Now we don't give a fuck about Tara. We're doing this now. We're doing this, which by the way, has nothing to do with Tara. So maybe the Tara thing wasn't as important. Well, that's my point. Exactly. So you're saying Alvarez being shot was more important than Tara from whatever she said to you. Correct. Silly. Silly. Okay. So um, Sheriff Roosevelt shows up getting into juice again with the piss test. You got to go pee. You're all yeah. tense now, man. Tense. I mean, it's really great acting, but you're fucking tense. I don't know what's going to happen with you. Well, there's a moment coming up where it's the only thing I really remember. Um, okay, so crew, the crew's going after the shooters. I'm really glad I missed these days. <laughs> okay, one little thing. Oh, yeah, trust me. The fucking jack will shoot me up fucking scene in back alley. It never worked for me. Anyway, there's a, did you see that little uncomfortable stand between Clay and Tara? Like, Tara and Clay were outside the clubhouse, yeah. and he saddled up beside her. Tara knows nothing. She doesn't really trust Clay right now. We know why she shouldn't trust him, but she doesn't know that. But there's just a weird daddy vibe yeah. that Clay's giving her. And it was just, it was just fucking uncomfortable, right? Anyway. Clay's then, vibe, Clay's vibe from here on out has been kind of odd. Oh, see, I'm so glad you said that. It's like this, it's such a dark road. Clay has put himself on. It's all over. Yeah. That's what I written down. Yeah. There's th just everything that's happening is his whole demeanor is almost like bad guy. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like everything he's doing seems to be in preparation for something that has to deal with him and like, you know, or, or such, such a great point. And I, we're, we're going to get Perlman on here. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. And he may or may want to talk about all of it or none of it. We'll see. But between you and me, you were so close to him as I was back then. Yeah. He was not happy with this. No, story. he wasn't happy. And he'll be the first to tell you he wasn't happy. About yeah. That. All right. And and then listen, I don't, I, there's a part of me that doesn't blame him because I got to be honest. It's, it's a fast turn, right? Like the turn is fast. And well, well said little brother. It's almost similar to, and I'm, and listen, I, my God, I love Juice's journey more than anything, but, but I remember when we did, and it'll come up in the future, 
is when we did that scene where Juice joked around for a second with Tig, where he's like about the shoe polish in the hair. Yeah. And I think that that might have been the only joking scene I did from season four to seven. And I remember thinking, God, I don't get to joke around anymore. Yeah, where, we joke- where, where'd those days go? Right. And because everything got really serious with everyone. Remember, remember you and I would we'd go to all these charity events and shows and, and show off the show. And they were so happy to have us, the Dominic Pagones of the world. Mm-hmm. And, and these real one percenters would come up to us and go, fuck your show. I just, I can't stop watching it. But I got to tell you, we had a lot more fun. We had a lot more fun than that. Like we didn't have as many guns and all that shit. Yeah. And, and we knew that we're a TV show. It's a fictionalized yeah. outlaw TV show. But they would just go, where's all the fun? I wish we would have had more fun. Uh and, I, and I think, in. yeah, I think I think that Clay Tig Juice, some of the funnier people didn't they kind of went dark for 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 from no, from, we're, the middle, we're, from the middle we're, on. We're coming up to it. We'll get to it soon with you yeah. and Clay in the clubhouse. Stunning. So anyway, keep going. Where are so we? here with the crew, the crew has now become Spec Ops. Um, they're a Spec Ops motorcycle club. They're Gotta on go. this. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if we if Sons of Anarchy has a tactical training course in the back of uh, Telemaro, but we everybody did. is. We did. We do. We have. Yeah. It's the whole thing. It's like this way. Hold hand, hand the whole climbing hand up, stick. escalate. Yeah, crazy. it's crazy. And I do, but you know, the only military guys were you and Clay, right? Correct. Yeah. So again, silly. Um, Ch- uh, Chibs lays out the biggest Jesus Christ I've heard on the show. So that scene, let me talk about that scene real briefly. So we get inside this fucking this apartment. crazy scene. And yeah. I'm telling you, Gwyneth Order Payton, God bless her, and the crew, Stevie and, and Dave, and the camera people. If you think for one second there was like uh, COVID rules back there, back then there were. And I'm going to tell you what they were. We had 15 very large men in a room the size of my closet back there. We had nowhere to put the camera. Then we had all these beautiful extras, these gals and kids, fucking Partyville. Can you imagine Gwyneth trying to block how we were even going to shoot? We had to shoot a third of the way, then everyone moved, then that third of the way, then everyone moved, then that third of the way. Oh, and wait, then we got to edit it all together to make it make sense. It was a shit show. Yeah, we did that a lot. We used to go to these oh small locations because we sh- we shot on a lot of real physical locations, meaning that while the stage is great, we didn't shoot a lot. We shot all the suns, the Telemaro stuff on stages. But when we went and all out, the hospital stuff, that was a massive yeah. set. But when we no, went we out, we were on location. All we were on time. location. So you were like in someone's apartment that was like a studio apartment doing a shot <laughs> and there was nowhere to people to stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, oh, yeah. Chib screaming, Jesus Christ. You want to talk about honesty? That's how he was feeling that day. So we find out there's another cartel involved. Yeah. Right. Sonora cartel and Bobby. It's exactly what Bobby didn't want to happen. Yep. So he's like the, I told you so. I better told call you. Romeo. He says, better call Romeo. It's a real tough day at the office. Uh, and it's a tough day for you, man. Little fucking Theo. Oh, my uh, God. Well, now Tara wants to talk to Gemma and basically Juice opened his mouth about the cartel, made Tara aware. And uh, now she's had enough because she's like, there's a fucking cartel and a drug, whatever. So they have their little thing. Yeah. Um, and Tara just now she's scared mixed with like, yep. fuck, I thought I was getting out. Yeah. Um, the Roosevelt and Potter scene is a really interesting scene, I guess, because I hadn't seen it. Big I'm threat. Starting, Big threat. I'm, yeah. You know, I think that this is so funny when you go hindsight's always twenty twenty. as juice. I hated Roosevelt. Yeah. I really like Rockman as juice. I hated Roosevelt. Yeah. I'm starting to realize that it wasn't really Roosevelt. Duh. It was Potter. It was Potter. I didn't know because I had never really met Potter. No. And and you're just being real with your fucking acting and reading shit and going along with what Juice would feel like and figuring it out. But that guy with the leather jacket, he was the douche. He was the douche. That, that's the guy who was pulling all the bad strings for, for yeah. Roosevelt. And Roosevelt's really trying to be like, fuck, what are you doing? Like, don't do that. And, 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 and I loved how he goes, I'm not doing that. And Link goes, well, you are. 
Mm. Because this is what's going to happen to your career. This is what the DA is going to come down on you. Yeah, I don't want to talk to your boss. Uh, I don't want to do this uh, I, again. So now Gemma tells uh, Jax about Tara. He's going to go talk to her. And now that whole thing's going to blow up because what he's been saying is we're getting out. It's this. And now she's starting to see a picture being painted clearer of uh, this ain't going to be as easy as he nope. made it out to be in the nope. beginning of the seasons. This ain't no normal life, Tara. This, this is your no life. Normal life. Yeah. Um, Clay tells Alvarez what's up about the cartels. These are just two old gunslingers. Basically, it doesn't affect them. It's not impacting them. They just like we got to handle what's at hand. And this so is can, what it is. And, and in there, it, I just jotted down like this must be really bugging Clay. This doctor's note, like this, the 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 Tara note that she got. Like Clay didn't do it. He knows who it is. He does now. We, he does. We've now. seen coming up. Yeah, he knows. When, and when, right when, after, when, right after the second Emilio or Alvarez says it would be with your their children. It would be with your blood, kids' blood. The kids' blood. Clay goes. Well, there's only leaves, one. There's only one, one thing. Person. Yeah, yeah, one person. So Juice signing the paperwork to meet the guy. He's in a yeah. bad position, right? Juice yeah. is just in a. Just, just in a fucking bad position. Let's just call it. I just said you're in such a bind now. And I go like this, Theo. I go, oh, fucking juice. He's really in a bind now. There ain't nowhere to go but a tree branch. I mean, I just went, this kid, he's not going to get out of this now. No, no. And there's and there's a point in this episode where he knew exactly what he was going to do. I was going to ask you that, Rossi. I, I did maybe so subtly see it in your face of uh, resigning to that thought, yeah. whatever that thought was going to be. I saw it in your, in your eyes. It was so subtle, but I thought, Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I did was I've, I've, you know, again, I've had a, a couple people in my life who have, who have, uh, or I should say on my journey who have taken their own life. You know, we I'm all, sorry to hear that. we all, we all in one way or another know, uh, you know, people who have and who who've made that choice. And in all my research and studying when this was coming up, first, I, I, I hearkened back to an uncle of mine who had taken his life and what his demeanor was. And then uh, I did a lot of research on it. And what I found overwhelmingly, and obviously not everything's 100%, but what I found overwhelmingly was a kind of a sense of clarity of like, it's all good. Like, I it doesn't matter. Not, nothing you say matters. Like you could tell me anything. Oh yeah. There's a scratch in your car and you go, okay. Or, Hey, this happened to you. All right. You know, because this is all irrelevant because they're not going to be here and they've made the decision. It's usually the wrestling with the decision up to it that gets Yes. Uh, you know, irksome and, and, and gets the, the mixed emotions and the anger and the, this and that. But once the decision is made, yeah, everything changes. So there was a point in this where I was like, oh, he, he made the decision. And once he made the decision, there's no, the only thing that uh, is coming up, the only thing that alters that, that, that maybe what, for lack of a better word is the curveball he didn't see coming is when Clay gives him the Men of Mayhem patch, which we'll get to. So I had to well, make, well a said. yeah, I had to make a choice of that the decision was made that Juice knew exactly what he had to do, right? Good. So, so answer to Gemma and Clay, Clay walks in. I, I mean, I gotta tell you, he really slammed Dayton down on the couch. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm going. Where the fuck is that now? I'm going, he fucking slammed him. He really did. Yeah, man. That was a scary moment. Dayton has bad hips. I mean, it could have went at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of calcium in those bones. He could have went down. Yeah, no, he slammed him. It was, it was fun, actually. Good for Dayton. Good for Clay to get through that. No problem. And, and basically, he knows now, right? it's so another he knows threat. Now. It's another threat. Yeah. Right? Do you he knows think Hunter's put... scared? Do you think Hunter was scared? Uh, I'm not sure Hunter ever being the cancer written uh, off work, wearing his pajamas, doing the right thing. I'm not sure he ever really, really, really gets scared of anything, but he was certainly threatened. 
Mm. He was certainly threatened by Clay, these two old boys back in the day. It's not getting it's not getting any better between those two right now. Clay knows. Unser knows that he knows. So now what? Yeah. And and now and this is this this was an interesting scene for me to watch because I'd never seen it. I've seen a lot of pictures of this scene, but I've never actually seen the scene. When he goes to meet Roosevelt, Juice is like it's over with. Like he actually smiles, like, okay, I'm okay, cool. Like here, the, the relief of like, I'm gonna do this, the club's gonna be okay, I'm gonna go take my life, like it's okay, like it's oh my god. And then he arrests him. Touche, man. And what Touché. the fuck are you doing? Would no. And this this kid just can't have anything go his way. You can't get a break. Can't get can't get a fucking break, man. Can't get a break. So we go into lockdown protocol. Um, I forgot about the other prospect who came. Walter. Walter. I forgot about him. I wrote down. I said, I wonder if that's the first time we actually see Walter. I mean, maybe. And also, you want to talk about body slamming? Chibs fucking slammed him. That's an interesting choice. I, and I, I said to you, I think that was ad lib. That I, that wasn't in the script. I mean, Chibs interesting just, choice. Oh yeah, Chibs just fucking elbowed him. Like, what do you mean you can't even watch a, a porn star? What's yeah. fucking wrong with you? She ducked out. Choice. I always, you know, people don't realize that if you're going to do something like that, you always have to tell the other actor, right? Like, hey, I'm going to come out and I might, I might bump you or I might whatever. And and you know, if you're in it, you always go, sure, man, whatever you need to do, like make it real. Like whatever, whatever the truth is, like we just spoke about with Flanagan. But it's really interesting because, again, we're seeing him for the first time in my mind. Maybe we did think so. Before. No, I think so. And then all of a sudden this, you know, this person's part of the scene. Right. And you think from a writing perspective. Wouldn't it have been better if it was. Uh, filthy Phil or would it have like, you know, someone you were familiar with. Um, I think they were just throwing spaghetti against the fridge here. We're introducing some new prospects coming up and there's more coming. Get ready. Yeah. There's more coming. Oh, by the way, we're coming up on something. Uh, juice and sheriff scene in the cell. Um, this is when he knew, right? Uh, he knew and it's over. He walks out. He knows what's happened. Now is when Tig threw the cigarette at him. You have to right. Juice coming back to the clubhouse. I'm tossing a cig at him. He's tired of taking orders from anybody. What is actually going on in Juicy's head? I mean, you knew then. That's the cigarette toss. That's when you came. And, and I think this is when you get you get uh, summoned by Chibs to go see Ronnie, right? In the in the clubhouse. Yeah, well, Chibs tells Clay yeah. uh, that Juice is checked out. Yeah. And... Clay does whatever he thinks as a good president would do is if someone's under duress, if someone went, has gone and seen some horrific things, you know, we all knew, you know, amongst the club, amongst us, we all knew what each patch meant. Yeah. Right. Um, everything meant something, right. Every yeah. patch that someone had meant something. Yeah. And the men of mayhem one meant something for, I mean, it's right there in the words. And him getting that again this is a kid who's the whole life is his club whole life and to get for lack of a better word a promotion yeah in the midst of what's going on no it was the perfect thing to do it was the perfect clay moment to give the kid who shot Miles because Miles was stealing coke from the club and shot the Russian in the beginning and, of the and, and the Russian all that. Oh yeah. The fuck he brings up the Russian shit. Doesn't yeah. he Clay does. So it's great how two characters can be in the church like that. And what's going on in your head is completely different than what Clay thinks is going on in your head. We're just going to help the kid out. And this is your saying goodbye to him, man. What a scene. You want to talk can about I that? Can I tell scene? you something? Yeah. Ronnie's so fucking brilliant. Do you know what he yeah. did in that scene? It wasn't no. scripted. Mm -mm. He called me son. Yeah. Do you know that wasn't written? I believe it. And it fucking broke me because oh. this whole thing is going on with Juice's oh. dad. And he oh. says that. And Come you on. go, 
fuck. Right. Come on. And that's where this whole thing of like when when two artists or whatever you want to say are in it and they've done their homework and they're taking chances for him to say son. Yeah. Perfect. Is it's oh bless you, Juno. Um, has got bless you, Juno. Bless you, Juno. She just woke up from a sneeze. She's on the bed doing her Good. thing. Um, but just to do that is it just shows it makes it makes an incredible moment a bigger moment. Yeah. Right? Um, so good for Ronnie. Beautiful. And uh, I wasn't it wasn't scripted and I wasn't expecting it. There's also something else that's really well done in that scene. If anybody's watching it while we do these, the lighting that uh, Gwyneth did. Yeah. Uh, Gwyneth had somehow coincidentally directed all my best episodes. Oh, isn't just that the funny? Way, just the way it worked. I don't know why. She she was on fire on fire she was giving she was giving some heavy lifting uh my nude scene which is that's heavy for anyone to go oh, through God, yeah. my fat stomach that's heavy yeah that's heavy um yeah. Gwen, gwyneth happened to be there at the top of the food chain for these directors and we loved her so much she did such a great job yeah. paul maybaum lit that 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 clubhouse with you and ronnie like no other those little eye pops little well look I'm, i have half dark face half light it's on it's on blue really beautiful. it's unbelievable it's unbelievable. His lighting, his lighting schematics in there yes. are unbelievable. He so, never got, he never got bored in that room, Paul. He kept moving around, moving around. He, got, he had to stay off, creative. That room creative. is the most used room in yeah. the whole show. And he yeah. had to stay creative and make them all different. And I think yeah. that was the biggest challenge of every director who came in. They go, what am I going to do in this clubhouse? Here? I know. Right. So true. Um, okay. So OBC's Lila uh, uh-huh. has split. Uh-huh. There's a lot of stories weaving in and out here, right? It's not important, really. Sorry to say. <laughs> I mean, it's just not. Um, <laughs> I'm just no. I, I I don't care. Yeah, does I mean, it I, I, I love something? Winter so much, and I love Opie so much. And God damn it, they're fucking. But I don't really think we 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 care right now. Uh, there's too many other things going on. Where's the old man? Where is he at? We're coming up to a massive fucking scene here with Bobby and all of us in the. In I have another question. Sure. Who's Armando? They keep saying Armando's missing. He's the guy from Samtaz, the guy in in Arizona, oh, good. with all that That's drug crazy. connection shit, yep. guys. He's missing now. The cartels got him, or find him, or where did he it. go? I, I know where this is leading. If I remember, yeah, something, it's all that yeah. Arizona Sam. Yeah, pack. you know what's coming, right? Do you remember this? No, I don't remember anything. Oh, I do. I will want to okay. see it. I just remembered something. I actually am super proud Good, of I'm myself. I'm glad I answered your question for you. I son. just remembered something now. Excellent. And you're gonna okay. know when it comes. It okay. has to do with it has to do with bowling bags. Um, okay. So <laughs> I know what it is. Okay, see now you know. <laughs> um that's right. Yeah. Let's you go pin, pin bowling. I love that. Yeah. And you know how and you know yeah. why it was so cool? Because I just remember the way everything looked, but we'll get yeah. into that when it comes. So the montage starts with yeah, Bobby please. challenging the presidency. Okay. Yeah. Like massive. I, I don't really remember that scene. I got to tell you, I don't really remember it because I've just lost so many brain cells, obviously. But I, I got to say, that's a big fucking moment. When you, as a one percenter in a club in a scenario like this, challenge a vote over the presidency. Did you see the way Clay busted chairs out of there threw fucking doors open? You get everybody. You get cozy. You get happy. You get everyone fucking down here. You're going to vote by proxy if they can't make it. We're doing it now. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Like big whoa. Like that's a moment where everybody's watching that and goes, wait, what? Because rightfully so, Bobby would be the president if Clay was gone. Like that, that's the logical, you know, uh, polar opposite. The juxtaposition to Clay would be Bobby, right? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be baking muffins for everybody. He'd be giving goodie bags. Like well, and that. and that's right. And as he said, I'm doing this because you are leading the club in such the wrong direction now. Time and time again, you have to go. And then Clay seconds the vote right away. Didn't even yes. let Bobby cut him right off. I'm in. Second it before anyone could even pro- nope. process what's happening. He seconds it. 
So we go to this montage and this is a wild montage. Um, first of all, Piney makes his first appearance in the episode loading a shotgun. So great day of work for that motherfucker. He had to work. He literally, what did he work? <laughs> 10 minutes? His shotgun drinking tequila. Thanks for coming in, Bill. Yeah, Bill, hey, episode, uh, season four, episode seven. Uh, you just got one scene. One scene. Be on a, be on a Tuesday. Thanks. Come in at noon. Take you about 10 minutes. Oh, thanks, bud. See you later. Want makeup or no? No, I'm good. Yeah. Do I have to memorize any lines? No. You're good. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. All right. Well, I'll just wait for my paycheck. See you later. Uh, um, okay, so... Uh, which is so funny. I mean, what a, what a fucking amazing, amazing. Um, here's the thing about juice sewing on that patch. Uh, before you start, before you start, I yeah. want you to remind everybody that is listening and watching this incredible fucking podcast. This is another example of why all bikers sew. We sew. We know how to sew. Home ec did not escape us when we were younger because we sew on these goddamn beautiful patches through leather. You have to sew. So, anyway, well, let me, let me tell you. And we, you know, anybody knows, and you know, my, 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 uh, my mom, my crazy mom, Mary Jane is a dressmaker. Who so I love been around, Miss. been around, been around the sewing machines my whole life. Yeah. And um, I got to tell you something. It was kind of cold that night. Oh, I fucking bet it was. And you know my hands go. Oh, they're, they're from they're, the rain notes. They're cold they're when it's 100 degrees out. Yeah, my hands are gone. That leather. Oh, my God, Juicy. Was like piercing through a diamond. You needed a <laughs> fucking, you needed John J. Rambo's machete to get through that. <laughs> so I like to keep it real when we're working. And I, and I kept going to props. I'm like, God, I can't get this fucking. I can't get the needle through. through. It's too cold. So Gwyneth was sitting there and she's like, can you, can you just get one through the leather? I'm like, I can't, I can't get any. Oh, my hands are frozen. Terrible. Can't feel my fingers. And, and. I can't, I just can't get the fuck. Oh, that's just, I had no idea. And I'm trying, she goes, how about just one for the, can you get it right? Like one for the gipper. One for the, can you just get one? So finally I go, guys, I don't like doing this. Maybe just do a tight shot on someone's hands who can do it. Yes. This ain't gonna work. <laughs> Maybe do it another day when I'm not here. Cause it's not going to work. So um, it didn't work. I and, love and, that. I yeah, didn't know so that, that story. the hands you see sewing that thing might not be me. Okay. Um, good. <laughs> so juice grabs the heaviest chain on the planet. It's a 700 pound chain. Big chain. I mean, big of chain. Course, of, of course, what's going to happen happens. Um, I'm not going to talk about my indifference of the handling of a very important song. I'm just going to go and just say, if you know, you'll understand. I don't necessarily agree with. It's a very important song. It's a very. Uh, I just don't like the way it was handled. But fruit, wrote, fruit for the crows. That one that Katie sings it's called the "Strange end. Fruit" is the song. Yeah. Um, but but the lyrics in it are the actual lyrics of the title of this show. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a, the title of the show is a lyric from that very important True. song. And uh, you don't like the song? No, I love the song. And it's well, a very what's, sad what's the, song. What, what issue do you have with it then? It's very meaningful. And it's about some of the most horrific things that have ever happened to human beings on this planet. And I just don't know if uh, the remake and nah, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. It's irrelevant. Cool. So here's the thing. He grabs the heaviest chain ever. And I know because I actually held it up there and I was doing it. Right. And then we were wrapping it around. And again, I'm like, this is like a really heavy chain. Is this the way you do it? Like, is this the way you would go with this? Like maybe a rope or maybe, you know, something. Here's my issue with this. I want, I want to say something, by the way, that happened on this episode. So we're sitting there discussing this scene because it was very important for everyone involved. And it had a lot that was going to come from it. And they were like setting up the cameras. And I said to Gwyneth and uh, whoever the uh, consulting producer was in the episode, and I said, why don't you just start on my face? Like, come here, here. And then reveal the chain. Like, just here. And then let them, so that, so by the time the audience is going, 
What what's he doing? What's he doing? What's going? He's oh gone. He's off the brand. He can't be doing that. Yeah. Right. That's shock value. Sure. It was the same thing we did with Miles with the gun, where I went, no, 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 just turn and then pop, 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 and end it. Don't like, don't linger and all that. Like, make them make the audience go. What the? Like, let them do their own thinking. So we did that. What I didn't agree with was the branch breaking. Don't meaning and don't take that the wrong way. I wanted the branch to break. I don't think that they should have heard it. Wait, let the week play out. And then so, so let's let's just first of all let's just make sure everyone's clear. There is a very subtle, if you're listening, after Juice does what he's doing and his feet are. He's gone. We've lost our boy. That's what we're supposed to think and should think. But there's a very, when the Reaper's face comes in, a subtle, wait, was that a branch that broke? Wait, was that wood? Wait, what was that sound? That's what I got from Why it, right? do that? Well, let's discuss it. So why did they do that? Did they think the powers that be, did they think that because this is not a like a show that you can watch all 92 shows in one day, we have to wait a week. Did they want to put people through a week knowing that we've lost juice? Or did we want people around a water cooler to think, did you hear a sound? No, mm. I didn't. Did it's you a hear conversation one? started. Yeah, it's a conversation piece. I don't that, think anyone didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I saw that. I saw this episode, bro. Way back, I know I watched this one. This was way too big for for the show, for your character. I know I saw this back in the day, and I I I don't remember hearing it. Well, I'm curious. Then I'm curious for the people who listen. Yeah, to get us. back to us. And let I'd us like know what, to know if yeah. you if you had heard it when yeah. you watched it yeah. for the first time, or whether you're watching it now. Did you hear it? Yeah. And would you have rather? Yeah. Not lovely have question. It? I'm glad you put that out there. Yeah, I just think that, again, I think what would have been cool, and again, let me, let me just always say, as someone that was nervous for seven years, I'm really glad it, I'm really glad I heard it break because I was going, oh, they don't have a week to think, should we just kill them off? Because right. if, the, if, like, you know, right. maybe if it was like a positive reaction, they would have been like, yeah, just leave them dead, you know, or whatever. So I'm glad that... Uh, well, you know what I would have liked, Theo, just now maybe, is like the sound of a crow. Or like a sound of the wild or like yeah. something in the background that is juices with the wild. Now he's mm. anything, anything. So wow, again, I'm just curious. Cause again, it was, so, it's the ending. Believe you me, when people bring up the show, the movers last night, anybody, they bring up that scene. Yeah. And you know, they're like, Oh man, that one like fucking crushed me, you know? And it's the same yeah. thing. Like, you know, it's like when they talk about you with your daughter and the yeah. handcuffs and it, you know, and it's, it's like when they talk about Opie getting hit, yeah. you yeah. know, it's it, that, those are, those are those monumental scenes. shows and scenes that people can't forget about ever. And For sure. So I'm curious of what they would think. Uh, but yeah, great, great episode. I mean, it's the beginning of really I mean, not the beginning, but it's the no, real. No, it ain't the beginning anymore. No. We got to the beginning three episodes ago. Now we're yeah. in it. Now it gets fucking raw and and confrontational. People are beating each other up like, fuck me. Oof. I can't wait to get on a real desk and a real uh, setup here with. Uh, I'm, I'm, hey, so I'm, not hating, say, I'm not hating on this lighting, but, uh, you know, no, the real. lighting's amazing. Can I just say congratulations on the move? Thanks. You're you're producing this show with me and Justin and you got it in. You've had no sleep. No. You look younger than you ever have. Yes. Thank God you don't drink or smoke cigarettes because you don't look no. any different. No. Now go to bed. Give my I'm love just, to I'm Megan and the take, boys. I'm taking a 15 minute power nap. I'm going. Take, take an hour and 15, would you? No, at 15. I can't take more than 15. If I do that, I might as well just sleep. Oh, you're hysterical. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Fucking beautiful. Great show. Hey, guess what? What? Next time I see you, you'll be somewhere else. And yeah, so but but here's the deal. As I told you, I may be coming back and forth. Oh, yeah. Early. So I may be in New York for the next one, or I may be back actually in L.A. 
And then back in, anyway, the kids will know when I'm in a different location. Well, remember, wherever you go, you need at least seven pillows behind. (laughs) (laughs) I'm bringing them all. I love you. Love you, buddy. Goodbye. Later, brother.